Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 8. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 5 of Book 8. Now, before I begin describing what the proposition is about, we have a couple of definitions that we need to go over. So the first definition are plain numbers, and what that means is if we have two numbers, a and b, that multiplied together give us a third number, c, then a and b are referred to the sides of the number c, and c is referred to as a plain number. The other thing that we need to define is compound ratios. Now, in Euclid's books, he did not define them explicitly, but they have been inferred. Um, what he meant by that just by looking at all the translations. So if we have a series of uh, ratios of a to b, b to c, and c to d, then a to d, the ratio a to d, would be the compound ratio of these three ratios. To be more generic, if we had three ratios e to f, g to h, and j to k, where the numbers a through d are the right proportions and continuously proportional, then a to d would be the compound ratios of these three ratios. Another definition that I got online from Math Only Math, a compound ratio of m and n and p and q would be m times p and n times q to give us the compound ratio mp to nq. As a consequence of all these definitions, a to d, which is the compound ratio of a, b, c, d, is also equal to e times g times j to the, or divided by f to h to k. So that is the definition of a compound ratio. Now in this proposition, we have two plain numbers, a and b, which are created by multiplying c and d and e and f respectively. So a and b are plain numbers, c, d are the sides of a, and e, f are the sides of b. So if we draw this as a rectangle, we end up with something that looks like this as a visual representation. Now the ratio of the sides will be c to e and d to f. So this proposition states that if we have two plain numbers, that a and b will be the compound ratio of the ratio of the sides. Now the compound ratio of c and e and d and f will be the ratio of c multiplied by d to e multiplied by f. So that is what this proposition sets about to demonstrate. So let's start with our proof. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the um, methods in the previous pro uh, proposition, Proposition 4 of Book 8, and we are going to construct three numbers, h, g, and k, such that g to h is equal to the ratio of c to e, and h to k is the ratio of d to f. And uh, we did it by using this methodology, which again comes from the previous proposition. So now we have gh equals ce, hk equals df. Let's create a new number, l, which will be d multiplied by e. Now, a is c to d, and l is d to e. So if we cross out the d's, we basically have that c to e is equal to a to l. Likewise, let's look at g to h and c to e. Uh, g to h is equal to c to e, c to e is equal to a to l, so consequently, g h equals a to l. Now we're going to look at b to l, 
And again, if we cross, in this case, if we cross out E, we have that L to B is equal to D to F, or D to F equals L to B. And since H to K is equal to D to F, and D to F is equal to L to B, H to K equals L to B. So now we have that GH equals AL, and HK is equal to LB. And again, if we do a little bit of um, crossing out, cross out the L's, cross out the H's, we have that G to K is equal to A to B. But G to K is the compound ratio of G to H to H of K. And that means that G to K is equal to G of H to, a, uh, to H of K. And although we can't see it anymore, um, G was defined as NC, H was defined, one definition was MD, H had another definition called, uh, defined as NE, and K was equal to MF. And if we get rid of the common multipliers in here, we have that G to K is equal to C times D to E times F. So remember, G to K is the compound ratio, and C D to E F is the compound ratio of A to B. So we have demonstrated that with two planar numbers, that their compound ratio is equal to, the, um, sorry, the ratio of two planar numbers, A to B, is equal to the compound ratio of the ratio of their sides. So A to B is the compound ratio of C to E to D to F. And thus, we have demonstrated this proposition.